Hello, second wave agents. Welcome to the division. <coughs> sorry, sorry. I'm King Link, and this is a last look and review of Tom Clancy's The Division. So, Humble Monthly Bundle for February 2019 started with Yakuza 0 and The Division. Both games are getting the sequel released in the next two months, and I'm a huge fan of Yakuza 0. I'll link my game awards for last year for undisclosed reasons at the end of the video. So I guess it's time to look at The Division and see how that stands up. Now, Tom Clancy is still making games after his passing, apparently, and even all new franchises. The Division is a cover-based third-person military shooter, which is what we've come to expect from the Tom Clancy name, brand, and Ubisoft. The graphics in this game are rather good, and I hesitate to show this video as it's not really showing the game at its finest, but unfortunately, well, my computer was limited in what it could capture. We'll talk more about that later, but let's talk about the game itself. The Division tries to recreate New York, and I believe they try to make it accurate. But I'll be honest, I only visited New York a couple times about 20 years ago. I don't really know how accurate the design is, but the world definitely has the feeling of New York, just a post-apocalyptic version of it. There's a number of famous buildings, and it's really interesting and cool to find all new locations all over the game. The game looks great, though I question if a lot of the cool tech, like shooting out windows and seeing the concrete has damage, was really necessary. While it's really cool for the tech demo, and a good quick look, I really noticed the features in my normal gameplay, and the question becomes how much processing power is necessary for that tech. The story of The Division, though, is the same for pretty much any Tom Clancy game. Terrorists have attacked, this time releasing an all-new virus over Black Friday that has left New York decimated. You are part of the second wave of a secret military organization known as The Division, part of the JTF or Joint Task Force. What happened to the first wave? What's really going on? Well, some answers are given, but the game really doesn't look at what happened previously. The game focuses more on the present day than the terrorist attack timeline. There's a decent focus on rebuilding the infrastructure, trying to get a handle on the virus, and creating a vaccine, as well as dealing with the roving band of rioters, military groups, and even sanitation workers who have decided that burning down everything is the best way to contain the virus. There's three main storylines in the game, though almost every mission in the game is allowed to be played in any order, with only the final mission of the game requiring completion of all the others, so it's harder for the game to form a cohesive narrative. Being a multiplayer game doesn't really help as well, as the game doesn't take the time to pause or give the player cutscenes during normal gameplay. The game is better for the focus on the gameplay rather than the story, still, it is a consideration. Each mission, though, does have a story, and they are decent by multiplayer shooter standards, but if you're coming to the Division for a compelling story, you might be left wanting. Though, I'll talk more about that in the written review in the description, and in fact, much of this review is heavily expanded on in that written review. Check it out if you're interested. The gameplay of The Division is that of a cover-based third-person military shooter I've mentioned. Running around without taking cover will get the player mowed down very quickly, and this is a tactical shooter after all. But rather than being a flat, cover-based shooter, this game adds in loot and gear number games. One gun might do 100 damage per bullet, while another gun you'll get at a later level does 1000 damage per bullet, headshots only do critical damage instead of taking out a target in one shot, and so on. You'll be plinking enemies over and over again, and it starts to harm the realism of the game a bit when you see how much damage some enemies will absorb, while you go down in a couple shots. If only someone discussed realism recently. Still though, this is a loot em up, similar to Destiny 2 and many multiplayer shooters, and that's fine, though it definitely feels like the enemy can take a lot more damage than the player. There's also skills and abilities that the player can use to try to even the score, rather than having the mythological skill tree that the player unlocks. Instead, skills and abilities are developed from building a base in Manhattan, and every improvement to the base gives the player a new skill or ability. You know, it's a great system, and honestly, it works well. Levels are more based on levels of enemy you might face, the gear that they'll drop, and the gear you can use. Every gear has a level, and higher level enemies will drop better gear, but only for players at their level. This all seems to work well, though the game's difficulty curve is a bit annoying. For the first 20 levels or so, the player can solo almost every encounter. There are challenging parts, but I found it a relatively compelling shooter. About level 20 or so, the enemies start to change, and solo players will start to struggle. 
Now, there are a number of reasons for this. Fighting against military units, the AI appears to change, the enemies get explosive grenades, which seem to explode entirely too quickly, and far larger groups. But the game stops allowing a solo player to really excel. And you can struggle, and there are guides on how to do a solo run, but the welcoming game shuts its door to most solo players. Now, teaming up with just one more player makes the game exceedingly easy, and with two relatively good gamers, the game becomes simple to beat. The struggle with single player and the ease of multiplayer isn't the best. Yes, the game does want you to play in groups, and it's better in a group for sure, but if that's the case, where was the challenge in the original levels, or a requirement or warning to find a group for a certain missions in the game? Now, I'm not heavily faulting the game for this. It's a multiplayer shooter, duh. But it wants to have parties, not solos, but similarly, it is hard to find parties at this point in the game's life. There's a different matchmaking cue for every mission, area, and mode of the game. And when you can find parties, I found it hard to find parties in the areas I needed to play. And there's not a general cue that really works. You can match for missions, but you'll be dragged into almost any mission, even those far below your level or that you've already done. Instead, you need to target specific cues. Now worse, Replaying a mission doesn't really help you as a player. The big XP and the gear bonuses at the end of each mission that you're going for are given a single time. So joining a player and helping them through a mission doesn't give you a benefit. Completing open world objectives only gives you XP and gear the first time, even if you're completing it in someone else's game. And possibly part of the reason it's harder to find a group at levels 25 to 30 is that at level 30 the game kind of changes and becomes more gear score focused than level for matchmaking. The fact is not a lot of people are playing this game. While Humble Monthly Bundle gives this game a little boost, it's definitely on its last legs and as the sequel is about to drop. That doesn't mean it's bad, but if you have a group, this is a great game, and honestly, I had a lot of fun with it. But I almost dropped this game at level 26, because finding a group was hard, and I really couldn't solo my way through the to the end game. Of course, like I said, the game changes at level 30, and you can start soloing the game again. In fact, I was really surprised. The end game content was good. It's a treadmill where you're just grinding so you can grind at a higher level, but you know what? It works. There's enough there, and I enjoyed it. A big piece of the endgame content was the Dark Zone, and it's the big feature of this game. A PvP open world arena where you can fight enemies, but also be betrayed by friends, and... Okay, maybe that's there, but honestly, I didn't see any people in the non-Dark Zone part of the game because that's instance per group. I didn't see people in the Dark Zone part of the game because I believe people stay at the highest tier difficulty. Yeah, I can grind my way there, but honestly, by that point, I had enough of this game. I get get a group of friends, play through the game, and you'll get probably a 20 to 30 hours of gameplay and then the post-game content if you want to go into that. And it's a solid experience. If you're a solo player, you're going to have some struggles, but finding a good group or just matching with someone will create a fun experience. Of course, we do have to go over a little negativity here. There's some stuff in the written that goes much deeper, but let me summarize two big arguments with this game other than the weak matchmaking, which is a problem. Now, the controls. Oh, the controls are usually really good, but can be frustrating. I often took cover, but I would sometimes attach to the wrong side of the cover, and that's bad. I found it very frustrating. Even slipping around the edge of a cover can both take either forever or very fast. The later might be more of a visual UI issue that I don't notice it's happening until it happens, but either way, a few seconds in gunfire will f- kill you, and that is frustrating. In addition, the heal action that I used religiously is a bit dumb. A single button press will make you pop up and aim the heal device so you can heal your friends. A double tap heals yourself. The number of times I popped out of cover because it thought I single tapped and got murdered is at least in double digits. That probably should have been a hold instead of a tap. The game can take a long time to load into the game. Its initial connection to the server can take, you know, 5 to 10 minutes in my experience, and even give error codes. However, the solution for those error codes is just retry, and then it works. Now, what's going on here? Not everyone has this, and some people get on in seconds, and yes, some networks are going to be different, but I tried everything and still get a 10 minute delay to get on. I've never had this problem after that point, never had a slow connection, never had a disconnect, and other games work fine for me, but 5-10 to minutes waiting to log on to a game is excessive. Finally, one last issue I do want to bring up, the performance. Listen, you can call my computer potato, and okay, 
I'll accept that it's probably aging a bit, and I do plan on getting a new one relatively soon. Though, honestly, I'm not playing a modern game and blaming it. This is a three-year-old game in just two months. I shouldn't have these issues, but the game is not well optimized in my opinion. It thrashes my CPU and that's what really uh, kills the game, and thus why my first look, well, it's a slideshow. I ran this game at 720p to try to get a better consistent frame rate, and in an online shooter, you need that. If you can run this game, well, great, no questions, it's fine. But man, similar games do run on my PC, and I feel that it expects more hardware than it really should have. If you have a beast of a machine, of course ignore this point, but anyone who thinks they might be on the border, yeah, it's going to be a bit brutal. With all that out though, let's summarize. If you got a team that will work together, this is a fun game, and you should enjoy it. But as a solo player, honestly, it can be a bit problematic. I'm not saying you'll hate it, but the players are just not here, so you're going to be waiting for them. At launch, this game was probably a lot livelier, and made it so you could go through this game easily at any level, and have a lot of fun. As it is today, yeah, it's the struggle. But I think it's enjoyable enough to take the plunge. Just be aware that this is 2019 and the sequel might already be out when you see this. Its launch date is March 19th, 2019. I don't know what the player numbers will be after that point, but definitely going to be a lot lower. I'm mostly judging this game on the game itself, though. Yes, there are issues, but while the login is annoying, it doesn't take away from the game. The hardware issue is frustrating, and I don't know if it's me or it, I still want to bring it up. And while the controls do frustrate me as well, they're relatively minor, but I do have to call them out because the minute you get killed because of bad controls, you're going to hate them. Overall, though, I give Tom Clancy's The Division a 3.5 out of 5. You know, it's a really fun game, it's a great addition to the Humble Monthly Bundle, and while it's no Yakuza 0, I'll be honest, I thought I would slag this game like Destiny 2, and, you know, I had a lot of fun with it. Putting 30 hours into this game, that's, you know, that's great. It's a definite recommendation, so check it out. And that's the division. I'm really impressed by it. Speaking of impressed, next time we'll be talking about a certain marsupial who has been mutated into a console mascot, and since probably been forgotten. Poor Crash Bandicoot, but the good news is he's now back on PC, and I'll be covering his trilogy next. Can the 90s make a comeback? You know, I think so. Until then, guys, I'm King Link, and thank you very much for watching.